Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Engineering Functional Update. I hope you can all see my screen. If not, I think the presentation should be linked in the calendar agenda. Um, just wanted to welcome some uh, new team, team member, Chen Jay, for the support team. He is based out of Zimbabwe. And uh, we have a few people joining us next week, Victor for the production engineering, and Shinya, who will be a CICD intern. He has already contributed stuff to GitLab. So really excited to have these people on board next week and uh, I'm happy to have uh, a new team member on the support team. Uh, what have we done? We've done quite a bit and this is just a, a kind of the best of highlights um, that we have accomplished in 9.1 and 9.2. Um, one thing I wanted to call out was with in the platform team, we have internationalization. That means we have other languages that we're supporting within GitLab. We started with a simple page and the Cyclanics page and now we're expanding but already we're seeing a lot of uh, community attention to this problem of just being able to have a localization and translating a different um, okay. GitLab into different languages. So we're already seeing merge requests for Chinese, French, Portuguese, Bulgarian, German. People have sort of taken this and taken it upon themselves to add translations to GitLab. So really excited about that. We've got just merge requests. You can check it out in that link. Uh, as uh, yeah, actually different languages of Chinese. We have the simplified and traditional Taiwanese and you know, Hong Kong and mainland. So it's been pretty amazing to see that unleashed. Uh, on the Giddily team, uh, Ernst and Andrew talked a lot about what we did and the infrastructure. It's really exciting to actually test one of the main endpoints that we use for Git clones and Git pulls. And that's the info refs. And we tested that briefly in production. It looks like really promising results. Really excited to see uh, even more results that come out of that. On the geo side, I, in my last update, I talked a lot about what geo is and how it works. And I talked about how we're moving away from this whole system hooks approach um, to update the secondary. Now we have this new event log that essentially helps us track when people push new events. And so we can, on the secondary, uh, respond uh, faster without doing this uh, hook approach. So um, this allows for disconnected operations. So if the secondary, for example, gets uh, disconnected from the primary for some extended time, we can recover and not have to rely on the retries of some system hook event. On the support event, I know we talked about last week that uh, one of the main business problems we had was just getting sort of uh, Zendesk and Salesforce linked so that we could see uh, on a Zendesk how many, you know, how many seats did a subscriber have. So this has really been helpful. Uh, if you go to a ticket on Zendesk, you can actually go dig in and see like what organization th th this person belongs to, how many seats they have. I think it really helps us prioritize premium customers as opposed to uh, other customers. Uh, the build team doing a lot of great work with uh, Helm charts. Uh, we now have a way to deploy GitLab using a Helm chart and Helm chart is basically a way to manage your uh, Kubernetes deployments a lot easier. Uh, we have uh, a Terraform uh, scripts that can set up GitLab on, on Google Compute Engine. Re really cool stuff. And I'm really looking forward to using that for something like Geo, where you can have multiple machines spun up by Terraform and just automatically configure them uh, to work together. UX side is doing a lot of great work to support a lot of features we have. Uh, I wanted to call out a lot of work, great work by Chris uh, P on navigation. Check out the screenshots there. I think it's moving GitLab in the right direction. Uh, front end has been doing some awesome work with the real time updates. I think the first time I saw this was watching somebody edit uh, a description for database queries and watching it just evolve over a few minutes was just amazing. So it's one of those things that's, that you really appreciate when you actually see it in practice. So hopefully uh, all of you get a chance to experience that. Uh, on the database side, a lot of great work done on improving project authorizations. I think this has been a uh, really important uh, fix that we needed to go uh, that we needed to have because it's been a problem for a few releases now where people didn't have permission to access certain projects for some reason because it was stale and that we had to manually refresh them that is going away fortunately thanks to a lot of great work by Yorick you should look at that merge request it's a it's a terrific merge request on using Postgres uh, CTEs which are special queries to basically uh, uh, do recursive queries to figure out which project you have access to. So really cool work there. Uh, on the Prometheus side, I know Ben talked and Josh talked a lot about what they're doing. Um, I wanted to call out some great work by Powell on actually instrumenting Unicorn, which allows us to put metrics in GitLab to actually measure stuff happening within GitLab. So check that out. CICD, one of the long um, 
features that we've wanted for a long time is being able to schedule pipelines. For example, you know, having a nightly bill is a very common thing to do in organizations. And now we have that thanks to uh, a contribution by Shinya. Um, on the edge team, uh, Remy has been doing some awesome work adding this performance bar. Uh, this was, a w this is a way to, for anybody at GitLab to basically pull up your web page and just see which views, which queries are taking a long time. So instead of having a separate profile, you can actually profile within the application itself. I think it's, there's some last minute hangups with JavaScript, but in general, I think it works pretty well. Uh, discussion team, awesome work on multiple assignees. Uh, that was shipped last month. Uh, it took us a little bit of effort to get that out the door, but uh, the migration worked and we have it up and running on gitlab.com and users are using it today. Is performance bar CE or E? I believe it's CE. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's applicable to all. Um, concerns, I think everyone in the development team is struggling to get their tests passed so they can get merged. And you can see from this graph here that our test suite takes a long time and it varies significantly, anywhere from 40, 50 minutes to an hour and a half. Uh, we've got to get down to the bottom of that. There's a lot of indeterministic behavior that we're seeing and um, you know, some of them fail. We need to improve the retry mechanism. We need to improve the parallelization, try to figure out how do we get this more to a sane level. Uh, hopefully, you know, ideally down to under 10 minutes so we can work faster and iterate much quicker. Uh, things that are on my mind, application performance and stability. You know, uh, people often ask me, like, why is GitLab slow? Well, there are two main reasons why they're slow. Uh, inefficient database queries and just in, uh, repeated file system access. Now, the second one we're dealing with with Gitly. The first one, we can all, uh, anyone in the development team can help. I'll give you a good example. You click on an example there. This is something we saw when we were deploying 9.2 is that we had this significant regression where we were just reloading the same merge quest over and over. Now, I think that's being fixed it's already fixed, but things like that is hap happening in our system that there's a lot of room for optimization, a lot of room we can, uh, we can do to, for improvement. So take a look at that dashboard on the main source of GitLab Slowness. You can look at the different URLs we're profiling and drill in, into exactly why they're slow. Um, other things on GitLab.com and other things customers are experiencing are just things like repositories going missing because we have a cache state that's inconsistent uh, with reality. I know Bob is doing some great work to fix that. And we have a, a, a lot of issues on GitLab.com with customers just trying to import and doing merge quests and reporting that they're getting stuck or not actually completing. Again, that's, this is something we need to fix. I put this on the OKRs for quarter three to really just fix these fundamental issues. Uh, so for 9.4, uh, one of the big efforts we're making today uh, for uh, making it easier for people to use EE is just to make EE the default download. So the uh, DAO age created a lot of issues about what this means. Uh, a lot of the licenses have to be checked in certain places, but essentially we want to make it easy for people to download the EE package, run it. If they don't have a license, fine. They can use all the features of GitLab, but when they want to upgrade, we should make it really easy for them to upgrade within the application so that, that they don't need to worry about, oh, is it going to be hard for me to upgrade? Do I need to download the separate package? What issues I'm going to run into? It's just going to be there on the system already and they can upgrade really easily. Uh, one of the things that we want to start on for 9.4 is GraphQL. Um, this is really the future of how people are going to be doing APIs. So traditionally, everything is a REST API you ask for certain things, you get something back, but GraphQL allows you to have more dynamic uh, uh, behavior here where you can just ask specifically what you need and what you don't need. And I think we just need to get started on it because we're not using our API today and this is there's that leading to a lot of duplication of effort here because uh, somebody's Stan, might- Stan, uh, can, can you uh, make the presentation, like allow people to comment or edit? Oh yeah, sure, I will do that. Uh, uh, I'll do that after I finish here. Uh, uh, your, your GraphQL uh, URL is broken, so I'd like to oh, fix sorry. it. sorry. Okay. Uh, let me just do that here. Okay. And uh, Geo, like I said earlier in the last uh, month's presentation, we're going to actually use this event log and deprecate the system hook that actually does the, 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 the registers push events. And then we're going to continue adding to that log. So de dealing with things like project deletions and renames and things like that. Uh, one of the high level efforts that we're making to uh, attract more enterprise customers is having a high availability support. So specifically having Postgres high availability support 
in Omnibus is going to help a lot with that. And that's something that Marin and Ian have been working really hard on. And I'll go to questions. Yes, so cycle, translations only psychoanalytics. Performance bar, yeah, CE only, right? Uh, CE and E right now. Um, yeah, Jose, I will link that query optimization presentation. So no, we're not gonna kill the REST API. And I think, you know, having GraphQL will help. And if we need to build a layer on top of that, we can, but um, I think uh, we'll have V4 API there as long for a long time. So that's not gonna go away. But I think people who wanna use GraphQL will be able to use it. Hey, Stan, what I don't understand is why we're gonna call it V5 of the, uh, API, I understood that GraphQL allows you to have versioning within the API without adding like a V4 or V5. So I, f I think they'll exist side by side and at some point we'll point the V5 of our API would, would use the GraphQL thing in the back end. It would just like be a REST compatibility layer. Right, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Great, cool. Yep, thanks, Jose. Could you link that? <gasps> all right. If there are no other questions, thank you all.